you were also at Indiana for the season on the brink here, where John Feinstein is uh, at the time a young and relatively little known reporter from the Washington Post, all of a sudden has blanket access to the program. So my question is twofold. Number one, did you have any clue as that season was unfolding, knowing that this guy was gonna write a book, how big of a book that was gonna become? And did it ever occur to you that maybe letting somebody have all access into the world of Bob Knight, Indiana basketball might not be the smartest thing to do? No, I, they did such a good job of, there was really no distractions. You know, I think most of the interviews were, you know, done when we were eating, you know, post, not post game, but like post practice meals and stuff. So we'd done interviews like that at that time. So we really, and it, you got to the point where you didn't even notice uh, John being around because he, he was just, he was there every day. Um, you know, we were probably in the beginning, couldn't believe he got this much access, but um, you know, that was coach and, and it was coach's decision. And Right or wrong, it was a decision that uh, that he made, and but I don't how it affected us. I don't think it really had much much to play out with the, the until players. it was published. Yeah, obviously, but you know when it was published, it was it was pretty much back of the bus humor. It was it was <laughs> you know it was I can remember Todd Meyer and you know a lot of guys on our team would you know he they he I think Todd got the first copy of the book, and I remember back of the bus you know him saying, hey, check this out, check this paragraph out. And it really provided some humor and allowed players to relax because post book, pretty good things happen. Talk about that 1987 final, you talk about iconic moments. You scored 23 points in the championship against Syracuse, seven for 10 from a three point range. Was that kind of an out of body experience? It wasn't all that unusual for you to shoot so well, but you certainly did that night. Well, it was fun because it was the year, it was the first year, it was the inaugural year of the three-point line. And so much was made of how, and I think again, how coach could spin things, um, especially publicly to take pressure off of either members like myself of the team or just the team as a whole. You know, he would always talk about how he didn't like the three-point line. And he maybe didn't at the time, but everybody talked about that, and there was less focus on us as players of making that three-point shot. So I never felt any more pressure to make a three-point shot than I did a free throw. And I think that was, again, the genius of Coach Knight. I can't stand this rule. I don't know why they're putting this rule into it. And then when you look at the 87 team, there might be a lot of things that you look at at the 87 team of why we won a national championship. You definitely have to look at the three-point percentage because I think we made an awful lot. We had one of the better percentages in the country that year. So that three-point line had a long way to go with us winning a national championship. You went through, and I know when you're in Bob Knight's orbit, it's a lifetime experience, and there's ups and downs in that experience. And I sort of feel like you and Mike Krzyzewski went through maybe the most public ups and downs uh, with them. I know other guys who aren't as visible have, have, have gone through this over the years. And there was a period of time when you went back into the league at Iowa when it seemed like you guys basically had no communication. I'm sure you remember well your first game in Assembly Hall and how much that was part of the conversation. You were very open about the fact that at that point you guys weren't talking. So how did you get to that point and how did you get out of it? Well, you get to that point a lot of, in my mind because of media, uh, Seth. There was a lot going on in Coach Knight's um, world at that time. Uh, a lot of people talking about how he's going to step down, and then they immediately start talking about my name. When I was even my last year at Missouri State, going to the Sweet 16, then getting the Iowa job, and that, that conversation, it was very uncomfortable for me because that was never in my thinking. And, you know, though I, I have an incredible love for Indiana, I never have ever pictured Indiana University without Coach Knight coaching because that's what I grew up watching. I lived it as a player. And even to this day, with no disrespect of any of the coaches that have followed Coach Knight, I still see Indiana University and Coach Knight being that's the marriage. It wasn't Coach Knight and I not talking by choice. It was just all the things being written media-wise. And then you, you get to that first game in Assembly Hall, and Coach Knight, for the first time in his career, doesn't walk out the same way. He walks out a different way, and that's Coach Knight. That's taking the pressure of the uncomfortable of a former player trying to have a handshake with his mentor and his coach. He takes that completely away. And those are the things you appreciate because it, it was more uncomfortable for me than it was him or anybody else. And for him to do that for me and uh, the things that he's done 
way beyond outside of the game of basketball, I owe him a great, great deal. Um, he's meant the world to me. So I appreciate all the little things he's done. And really, I think that was more media driven than anything else. And, and he, nobody's helped me any more than he has other than you know, my father, obviously, but uh, Coach Knight's helped me in so many ways. I mean, it's nice that you were able to get to that place that you were with him right now. And, yeah, and because Mike Krzyzewski also. I think every player wants that in his coach. Um, you know, we talk about that here in recruiting, that it's not a four-year deal, or if you're a one-and-done, a one-year deal. It's, uh, it's, we talk about lifetime commitments. I, I hope that my Manchester guys still feel like they can pick up phone and call me when they need me or to tell me the birth of a child or whatever it is. Uh, same way with Missouri State, Iowa, New Mexico. Uh, I want to be close. It's a lifetime commitment even when you move on or the players move on. And I'm no different than that. I played at Indiana. I played for Coach Knight and I want that relationship uh, throughout my entire life. And I, he told me, Seth, when I, the home visit he, he, with, in front of my mom, my dad, my brother, and myself, he said, you'll have a chance to play for championships, which I did. You'll get your degree in four years, which I did. You'll play with great teammates, which I did. And you'll have a friend for life. Those are the four things he told me in the home visit. All four of those things have taken place. And uh, I really appreciate that. And by the same token, over the years, that job's come open a couple of times. And every time it came open, your name was sort of tossed about. I mean, it would seem to be, especially with your coaching track record, if you think about it, it's kind of shocking that it hasn't happened. How come that never happened? Well, I never got a phone call. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> they it's never just, asked. It's the, you know, you don't get places and you don't get positions if you're never asked. So, you know, you just don't get that phone call. And for whatever reason, you know, that's, that's the way it goes. I'm very happy with the it career have, path. It, it, it would have been tempting for you to, to do that? Well, it's Indiana. It's, it's where I'm from. It's where I played. So, yeah, that's an obvious answer to that. But, uh, but you know, the timing, whether it wasn't right for them or whatever, it, you know, I understand that. It's not hard feelings by me. I did my Indiana thing. I, I gave Indiana everything I had as a player. And, you know, hopefully there's an appreciation for that. And uh, I feel very blessed about my coaching career. I would not have wanted to substitute any of those stops because uh, I've met great people. I've had great players that I've uh, been able to coach and great coaches I've been able to coach with that I wouldn't have traded any of those spots.